Welcome back, everyone, to the Hearthstone Global Games. I am Raven, and joining me is Lothar, of course, for day one. Had so many great matches so far today. We've got two more coming up for you. The first one is going to be China versus Sweden. The match of the day, I would say. Yep. Right? Both teams are powerhouses. Uh, Sweden is basically alliance and show. Uh, a powerhouse on his own. I mean, he's a renowned streamer, but at the same time, well, he is actually very good at the game. Yeah, he was. Uh, he got the top eight at uh, HCT, just missed out on getting to the Winter Championship. So mm -hmm. very, very, very good player. Very recently ranked one, maybe even currently ranked one on uh, the ladder at the moment as well. We can see the group, China, Brazil, Sweden, Bulgaria, Switzerland, and Indonesia. These two are definitely the standout uh, you know, the standout countries in this group, as we see normally, you know, the way the uh, seeding works is you get sort of the, the powerhouse teams, yep. uh, a couple of them as they are groups of six, uh, and then, you know, some sort of uh, teams that are either up and coming, not well known or whatever, something like that. But as you said, Sweden is Alliance plus show. And then, you know, we have China, who is, uh, the China team is absolutely incredible, basically. Yeah. Uh, although, the main issue is like, you know, there's been so many China versus X tournaments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they, the pride is very important and they, they expect themselves to win, They're, you know. Uh, but they didn't do so well. At so HGT. far? Well, at HCT, they didn't get in, uh, didn't get anyone in HCT. Oh, yeah, it was right. one, one APAC, two Americas, one European player. Mm -hmm. So they missed mm -hmm. out on the winter season. Uh, Jason Zhao, Omega Zero, Lovely Chook, and Nightwalk versus Powder, Oskaka, Orange, and Sho. Absolutely amazing match coming up for you guys. And this is the order. Uh, oh, this is not the order they're going to play in. Sorry, I'm just making mm -hmm. things up. Uh, this is it. We have Jason Show and Powder as the sort of you know leaders slash captains of the teams. Powder was the uh, top point turner for uh, his country as well. So he was uh, classed as the anchor. We have Oskaka, obviously the uh, one of the recent world champions. Uh, Orange. Uh, you know, superstar player basically from from Alliance for a long and, time uh, has been performing very consistently throughout a, a reasonably long career now in Hearthstone yeah. as long as they're going to get anyway. And obviously, as you mentioned, at show, but these guys from China do not mess around. They uh, take it very serious, especially when national pride is on the line. And when it comes like the those names, I only can't really tell anything about Nightwalk, but other three three players are stars in China. Like, yeah. holy moly, big! They're really. Um, Strong competitive players, uh, ready we on this scene since 2014, if I remember correctly, when I was at WCA in 2014. All those players were actually present there. Yeah, these guys are pretty much the superstars of China. Uh, you know, as well as a few others, of course, but mm -hmm. players like, you know, Mega Zero, Lovely Chook, Jason Joe, especially, are just the consistent performers. We see uh, lovely shots there of the countries. I'm, I'm loving those shots. Glad we get to see them. Yeah, those are amazing. But we should be able to check out the actual uh, format of the uh, the matchup here. What players are playing what decks or what classes at least. The deck thing, I mean, we just watched Murloc Warlock, guys. Like, anything can... It's pretty uh, amazing to watch. Anything can happen when it comes to Hearthstone, especially in this expansion. So we are going to see Lovely Chook versus Show in a best of one, effectively, which contributes to the team best of five. Uh -huh. uh, Lovely Chook with Warlock or Rogue. Show, Warrior, or Druid. And that's going to be followed by Jason Zhao versus Powder, Omega Zero versus Orange, Nightwalk versus Oskaka, if required. And then the Aces are Oskaka and Omega Zero. Very interesting, you see, Oskaka is the fourth match that might and not the play. Fifth, right? And potentially the fifth that also might not play. So. Maybe, maybe it's like that. So, first three games are done. Oskaka sa stays Still alone. In bed. No, he stays alone, you know, and just, I'm going to yeah, play maybe, it by yeah. myself. So, if the two matches have to be played out, Res can just oh, it's just been bad. It's like make me play last. I want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, but uh, at the same time, the ace match will only happen if there will be a two-two result. But also, what is important, the fourth player will only play if the game will not result in a full sweep. Yeah, it's basically the first team to three points and three wins. So a 3-0 will mean that there is no fourth game at all. We've not seen any 3-0s yet. We've seen a 3-1. Well, a couple of 3-1s, should I say. And now we can see the actual decks the players have chosen. They get to pick their own deck. There is no ban. They pick one deck out of the two they've brought to play. Lovely Chook going for the Rogue in game one. Show going for the Druid over the Warrior. Maybe... Maybe Sho thought, I'm going to bring Warrior because it's it's basically it has been for the longest time. Control Warrior is one of mm -hmm. Sho's uh, specialities. So but opponent will pick my counter yeah. and then I'll pick his counter. Look, if you think of Sho, you think of Warrior and think of Control Warrior. And with Quest Warrior being so dominant at the moment, mm -hmm. it's a deck Sho I'm pretty sure has got. If you go against Sho, you pick the counter, then Sho's countered that with his Druid. 
So the druid will most, most likely will be an aggro druid to counter the uh, sorry to to counter the rogues, right? Because there are no taunts. There's no way. Yeah, of, e just, just kill them. Yeah, just. And also outside, taunt. like. Fan of knives, like the, you know, isn't really great to deal with a lot of these things as well. You know, a lot of the wide board fan of knives is not good enough most of the time. Mm -hmm. We see mm -hmm. some of the guys in China, lovely Chuk, uh, Omega Zero, and Jason Zhao there as well. So they're looking pretty good. We saw them not too long ago in a, in, in a, they were playing in the Bahamas as well. So it was awesome. And Show just rocking his. If you've ever seen Show's stream, I think it's going to look very similar, <laughs> very similar in terms of that camera. You know what's what's really happy to see, at least for me, is that those players, when they are with their uh, countrymen, they are way loosened up, you know? Oh, they yeah, actually yeah. Way more relaxed. Lot, yeah. may, way more relaxed. It's also the thing when you speak your, not your na native language, uh, you are less reactive. You have to be, you know, if you have to think about what you I mean, if I, for say. example, had to talk in Polish, I'd be, I wouldn't be talking You'd be damned. <laughs> I wouldn't Safe be talking much. No, because <laughs> I can't. Uh, yeah, it's really great to see the teams come together and how they how they work out. And it's it's great on two levels as well. There's one level of, well, even whether or not comms or not, mm -hmm. you know, how they actually work together to win. And also, it's just fun to hang out and play some Hearthstone, if anyone doesn't sure. know. You know, we, we, me, you, and Sotl were in the hotel room last night. Uh, before bed. <laughs> <laughs> before anyone makes those comments. Uh, actually, just jamming some Hearthstone, just playing some games. Well, you were about playing. Decks. I was just um, streaming. You're actually just watching us play, which maybe got a little bit weird. But let's not talk about us. And let's talk about these teams. China versus Sweden. Lovely Chook versus Show. Quest Rogue versus Agro Druid. And, you know, you called it. The Agro Druid was a really nice pick to beat up this Quest Rogue before it can even get going. Yeah. The thing is about the Quest Rogue is that it's... The, the minions that he will play in first turns are really bad. Yeah. <laughs> like 1-1, one, 1-2. One, one, well, maybe 1-2 one, with a 1-1 one, one because patches will come out of the deck. But usually, they're not a good match against the minions that Sho will play. Enchanted Raven, Arden Squire, all those minions will just be strictly better yeah. than the ones that your opponent is playing. And, and then you can buff them and smash face. Exactly. And I imagine we might even see uh, either both, or there we go, or one of the Ravasaur runs thrown away. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not really a card you want to open with because you need two minions for the adapt to go off on that guy. So, uh, so yeah, we did see one get thrown by Show. Show does have Innovate as well. And the coin. He can make some big plays onto the board. And Unfortunately, quickly. that Defender of Argus is not really the best. No. Maybe it's okay if you can Innovate. Now. <gasps> <gasps> All right. <gasps> I mean, so now this is you, pretty you sick. Just play Raven, 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 Innovate. Yeah. Raven, 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 Innovate, Runt. I know you love me, Lothar. We don't need to keep repeating my name. Okay. Oh, Raven, Raven. <laughs> I mean, this is sick. Yeah, this is actually just the opening I think you want. There is maybe one argument for keeping hold of Innov uh, Innovate to go for Argus. But I think if you can go this hard on the board against Rogue, like yeah. Quest Rogue, I think you actually do it. I think so as well, because it, you can top deck. Um, you can top the well, a lot. Of, a lot of your draws are actually just good at this point. Yeah. And the fact that you are already adapting and run on turn one is pretty sick. Lovely Chuck is like, oh no. Innervate. Uh, why? Divine Shield is pretty, feels good, pretty yeah. sweet. It doesn't die basically to anything. So it's uh, like. Minibot. It's like Minibot, yes, exactly. Minibot that you have to hit the Divine Shield on So build your own. You would have played Minibot in this deck if you'd have the option, so why not play it? Do it your own. Three two twos on turn one, one of which has Divine Shield, the other two are beasts, so it can get buffed. Oh, sorry, all three are beasts, so they can get buffed yeah. by Mark of Yasharaj as well. And Absolutely. the problem is, you can't really get the deck can to charge because you don't have mana to get the dagger out and then play the deck hand. So you can deal with only one of those and then next turn what you have to do is gonna play at least one deck hand, maybe two. Oof. Oh my Oof. god. Alright, this is sweet. Which one do you buff though? Because there's merit to buff either of those. If you get a 4-4 with Divine Shield, it's pretty tough to deal with it, right? I mean, the, the deck doesn't play Sap, right? So I, I would buff the Divine Shield, I think. I, I think it's actually merit to buff the Enchanted Raven. Because this though, man. Well, the Eviscerate is, is a problem, definitely. But at the same time, it's hard to deal with both minions. Yeah, you, norm you normally want to spread power, right? Yeah. Like, that's the issue. You don't want to go all in on one. But without Sap, I think you don't have to worry about that as much. Uh, so we're going to see Cavern's below actually get dropped down on turn three. Something and now, new. And now some deck hands, yeah, because the, the only problem with the deck hands is they can't really be used to trade 
Because you need to bounce them. <laughs> you know, like, unless, you know, he wants to go f uh, flame elementals, but there isn't that many flame elementals in the hand. Well, he has a second de deck hand in hand, so it's not that terrible. He can play the deck in this turn, uh, the second one, attack phase for two, shadow step that. Next turn, he can play actually the deck hand for zero mana, bounce it back again, and get three minions out of four, right? So I feel like you might want to use that mana wisely. Oh, well, that's awkward. That's six mana, and you have well, you, you can have five. Yeah, I think you just make a 3-2 here. Seems good. And you want to build into Argus, and there's still a lot of draws that can help out. Uh, this is the only risk of this deck. You know, we were messing with this deck uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and sometimes you do just draw, like, one minion, then buff, 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 or something. You're like, oh, well, I have no minions to buff because he killed my first one, and then I'm kind of running dry. Yep. So that's one of the small issues, and the deck doesn't really run that much card draw in general. I don't know Show's list, of course, but the deck only really runs like Mark of Yasharaj. It's card, card draw, realistically. Um, and Genzo. We have seen Genzo today. Yes, definitely not standard. I do love Handsome mm -hmm. Guy, but he did lose. Yeah, he <laughs> did only lose. Well, three at last. He's, his opponent had a Lava Burst. Who would have yeah, thought yeah, about that, right? Say, so, yeah. yeah. The reads. I think it was a really good decision to play that Genzo and buff it, because the only card that was actually dealing with it was either Hex or Lava Burst. And you saw a Lightning Bolt back then, so yeah. Definitely a tricky decision to make. Yep. He's not going to. Uh, I'm going to change it, uh, uh, trade with the minion, sorry, because just not really too fearful with the deck hands already uh, on, the, on the prowl, so to speak. Uh, not going to be too fast. Swashburgle is going to be nice to try and draw something for the Team China here. Be able to deal with this board. It's, you know, the second, if this board is not dealt with quickly, then the Argus comes down maybe with a minion with the Innovate next turn, and then mm -hmm. suddenly this is almost mm -hmm. impossible. Might be. Huh. Alright, well, Swash Swashburger can give you a swipe. This is an option. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you start with it? Is he just not gonna play it? I guess. So it's two out of four, yeah. right? Yeah, and that's three. And that's you can shadow step and four, that's why. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. You can actually just put the quest right. this turn, so you're not gonna bother with the Swashburger. It's gonna be four, get the quest done. But you cannot play the quest this turn, so now I imagine Show's focus oh. is gonna be on uh, actually clearing these minions now. I was thinking maybe you want to keep the deck hand for next turn and play it as a 5-5 five five because it's zero mana. But then you can trade with the free two. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So you can play both, I mean, the entire hand. I think you just do, right? What draws are you going to get past this that require the Innovate? You don't have enough cards. So I think you just play it, get the value of a 2-2 Divine Shield Taunt, uh, go up to 5-5 five, five for the run, which does trade directly into a buffed uh, a questing minion, which is nice. Well, I Ooh, guess you need... Is there, is there a world in which you only buff the Squire? Probably not, right? Nah. I was thinking because the, the one of the minions that survives this turn, the quest will happen next turn, it just trades straight into run. That's true, but at the same time, you kill one of those. Yeah, 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 yeah this is right. It's just okay, that... Five damage to the face is really a lot. The You know that the rogue has actually no way of healing. He, if he doesn't have a prep, he will lose time next turn to play any minion. So, in this case, it's actually important to know that if he has a prep, there's only one chance to draw a minion. So the the, the board will not get that big. So I think it was but, valid to trade. But I think there is, you know the quest happens, so two five attacks actually reduce your board down to just a defender. Yeah, Argus. I mean, it was really, really clear. Oh, it was good to trade? Yeah, it right, was right, good right. to trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm back with you, Wilfer. Um, yeah, I agree. Because otherwise, you're down to a defender of Argus, and Sho needs to really, really get the most out of these minions that mm -hmm. he has on board mm -hmm. now. He needs to get Living Mana next turn. Oh, living Mana would be insane. Or Savage Roar, because Savage Roar right now, it's six damage. That's good. Yeah. That's like Fireball Draw. That's actually yeah. really good. Living Mana would be absolutely crazy, though. Yeah. Who would have thought? Living Mana on 10-5. Insane. Yep. In an aggro deck? Yes, definitely. Three. It's like just, just using your mana. Well, I mean, it literally is turning your mana into minions. But that's, like, so powerful when you have no cards. Fire Fire Fire? Okay. Still not bad. No, it's, it it's puts more, more dudes. More dudes for the Savage Roar. More dudes for the Mark of Lotus. More dudes for Power of the Wild, Power of the Wild right? He more used dudes? one, though. He has used one, yet. Yeah. But still an option. Uh, definitely good to just have multiple uh, dudes on the board, though. All you're trying to do is just chip away this rogue before anything gets too crazy. Not a surprise to see the uh, elemental get dropped as well. 
Want to go as wide as possible. Start pushing this damage. And this is five damage this turn. That is a lot. Still uh, a long way ahead of the Druid to dismantle the Rogue. Especially since now every single minion is a 5-5. Five five, so Stonta's boar is actually insane. Backstab. Not a minion. But still, I feel like you start with um, Fan of Knives. You kill... Then you kill with the backstab the Argent. And you attack into one of those minions so you can kill them. Ooh, that's like the worst draw possible. Yeah, that's kind of rough. It comes Swashburger to save the day, though. Ooh, okay. Well, that is playable next turn. It's a 5 5 pound. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at this turn, Lovely Trick is actually just dealing with these minions from show. I think it's game. That taunt minion is actually. It's, it's a immovable object. And before Black Knight. <laughs> <laughs> or Keeper of the Grove. 1 1. No, wait, it reverts to 6 7 then. 5 7, sorry. Dark Arc Core is 5 7, right? Oh, no, you'll. you'll uh, oh, yeah, yeah, but we'll have to. Uh, 6 7, 6 7. 6 7. Then it reverts. After the silence, no, it should reverse to 6 7. seven. Don't I'm so confuse confused. Me. And anyway. I'm so confused. For now, well, it's a 5 5. Old card. We've been focusing on trying to learn the new cards. It's just going to go and push the damage with Power of the Wild with plus 1 plus 1 buffs on these minions, though. Not make a 3 2. And go wider, just make these a little bit more durable and not going to die to dagger. Yeah, he's just drawing only spells. Oh, show sure. cannot believe it. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Six HP. So close, yet so far. Oh. I mean, Argus Hero Power helps get through this after two, two turns. <laughs> you have to, right? It has to die. But, yeah, but then how you win? You don't have a single card that deals six damage. Well, it means the Swashburgle has to trade into the Argus. Mm -hmm. And he's not doing damage to you then, right? That's true. Um, so obviously we can see that there's backstab hero power to kill the Argus, but you know, from Shaw's perspective, uh, this actually is just uh, what he well, it, Oh, he's not going to attack. Okay. I don't think actually backstab hero power is um, good for Lovely Trick, because why, what if for some reason Show plays a swipe? Yeah, just out of nowhere, swipe face game. Second fan of knives, deals with the Argus. A prep is not really helpful right now. The most expensive spell was already played, the yep. quest. Uh, he still has Mimic Pod in his deck, two of those. But at this time, it feels like he already has control of the game. Yeah, I but wouldn't even mind the Swashburger trading in here. Yeah. Just keep the taunt full health, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I like that as well. Hmm. I like that as well. I mean, it does, <clears throat> with the daggers, it does speed up your clock by a turn, right? If you traded the uh, Yarako, you hit for an extra five the turn after. Yeah, but at the same well, time... I don't think it matters enough. It doesn't really matter that much if you're like sure that your opponent is not playing direct damage. Yeah. Because there's just no way you can go through that. Like a crawl is not going to be enough. Not really. That's about it. Is there any card that can help him now? You will get ten damage this turn. One damage from the dagger. He is dead next turn. No, wait. One damage from... One armor will be... Um, created by the hero power and that will keep him alive for additional one turn so if he gets living mana next turn and love trick whiffs Double and he prep. actually whiffed prep into prep into prep prep concede he actually whiffed <clears throat> he'd probably really like to kill this igneous off if he could yeah. All right, well, this gives an out to show. He needs to draw Living Mana right now. Hmm. Pantry Spite! <laughs> Man, this meta, this meta game just brings so much, wow. so many cards that we never have seen play before. Act I mean, okay, this was played in, the, in Evolve Shaman, but... Yeah, actually Pantry Spider. Oh, and a ball. And that is one, one off. But pretty much lethal. Now, that I don't think there's any out for no one card, Stroll. Right? Oh, would um, Mark of Yashraj into Savage Roar. That's actually evil. So that'd be five. Uh, yeah. That's actually evil. Oh, is it? It would have been one, two, three, five trades. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course it is. Okay, he's going to kill off one. Stop that happening, which is reasonable again. He can't get lethal this turn, he pretty much sets up guaranteed next turn. Hang on a 
like the uh, APAC regions, China, just and, and China just dominating mm -hmm. so far in this tournament. Mark of the Lotus, not what Show needs. Yeah, it looks like China is going to go 1 0 up versus Sweden. Show balls. Very big surprise. It, you know, I thought that opening was just going to be too much for the road. Yeah, the but lovely was nuts. Just, just got him. Man, Raven, Raven, Runt, turn one. He it's put actually enough. six, six stats on board on turn one with four cards. And one at Divine Shield. And it still wasn't enough to deal the 13 damage. And drew straight into Mark of Yashiraj for turn two. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Still not enough, and you know the power of Quest Rogue. We said like you know we we enjoyed the Miracle uh, version as well, but Quest Rogue you can't really argue with the power of like one mana five fives basically. So far, uh, although to to be fair, the Arakoa won the game, right? Yeah, the Arakoa <laughs> won the game. Let's, let's, be, our, let's just wind this back a little bit. So without the Arakoa, who just lost, right? I think so. I believe so. Yeah. So we do see that lovely Chuk goes one zero for China over Sweden, and Jason Zhao up next going Hunter versus Powder's Warlock. Both players had oh. Paladin and chose not to bring it. I feel like Paladin is still um, uh, not there yet in terms of how how far mm -hmm. the other decks out of the classes are along in terms of how refined or how close you know good archetypes are. Paladin, not quite there yet. I've been playing it for the uh, last day or so. Mm -hmm. Quite enjoying it, actually. But uh, but yeah, now it's going to be uh, guys have just rotated seats. And the guys from Sweden aren't chilling together. Powder in his uh, apartment on his own as well. So I'm not rocking it with the Alliance guys. There's even a chance that some of the Alliance players aren't even uh, at home. Like Oskaka was at Throne of Cards, for example, in Vienna. Oh, yeah, right. So he, he might not even be in Sweden at this point. Uh, but yeah, the Alliance team are going to be rocking up next with Powder coming up versus uh, Jason Zhao. I'm looking forward to see what this Hunter list comes out. We've already seen Knuckles in Hunter today. That was not Like, that was Bananas. Knuckles. Oh, okay, Bananas, you beat me on that one. Good work. Czech Republic <laughs> already done the match of the, d of the day, but um, they should have played Knuckles. Yeah, and okay. everyone should play Knuckles now. I just feel like it's the correct thing to do. It's actually a big minion. It, it has a merit to actually be played right now. But um, now let's see what China brings to the table with the Hunter, because they always try to innovate stuff, right? So yeah. maybe this time it will be like a face Hunter. I wouldn't be too surprised if it was face Hunter. Because it's really great against um, Aggro Rogue, right? I mean, sorry, against Quest Rogue. Um, Leroy! It might be an Aggro, Aggro Hunter, although the question is, how does it pair against Zoo? You should have two Unleash the Hounds. Yes. Which is great against Zoo in general. But the beefy minions from Zoo nowadays are really hard to remove. Crackle, Crackling Razomore might be the MVP here. Crackling Razomore is always the MVP in any Hunter game, whether it's played or not. There's a freezing trap in Jason Chow's hand, though. So uh, now he's going to look into it. That's going to be interesting. Is oh, wow. you know, Zoo doesn't flood the board as much as it used to, actually. But it's still. I feel I'm like not saying it's good, trap, but. Um, when I was like analyzing the the traps for Hunter, it seems like Freezing Trap is not really doing any Anything. good job yeah. nowadays. Uh, Druid plays just small minions that don't really, you know, care about being bounced. Even when they have a buff, it's not really that bad. Um, Hunters have unleashed the Hounds always um, in every single deck. Zoo still has a lot of small minions. And uh, Egg Napper, an example, which just creates two one ones, right? You have Adapt, who creates one ones as well. So, hmm, interesting. So, uh, Powder not having a one drop is not what he wants to see with his Zoo. I mean, Warlock. But, uh, but Jason Zhao could be, and then the China team could be thinking, oh, you know, like a uh, Handlock. Yeah, or might control be. lock maybe, and then they'll see the two drop happen and think otherwise. Unless Powder decides to life tap. I, I think I actually like the life tap here, because of the fact that turn three the is the egg. Uh, yeah, but that's so slow. It is that slow. That is so slow. But it's the dream. It's the egg into the Pterodax, Pterodax, and that can actually give you Taunt Minion with 7 HP. True. That's true. Could be. That's yeah. like the idea of Could be Powder going for the long term. Powder also doesn't know that it's aggro or as aggressive or even secrets at this point. We can see mm -hmm. Cat Trick, Freezing Trap, so there's no doubt going to be yeah, the 3 drop as well. So there's the unleash as you mentioned. Bo will keep the imp away, and it's an it's a target that has to be removed as soon as possible because of its um, its ability to just cycle through the discard, which is super powerful. Because cards like Darkshire Librarian suddenly from a honest card becomes super dishonest. Like for two mana, yeah. three two withdraw a card is nuts. 
really strong and now Pado has the option between Egg and the Librarian but as you said the Egg sets up perfectly for the Pterodax. An important aspect of the Egg is the fact that it has 3 HP. It doesn't die to Explosive Trap anymore. Yeah. Which sometimes is a bad thing for the uh, for yeah. the Warlock because say you Algus it and then it's got 4 and it's like oh god, god. <laughs> like please just die Egg I want the 5-5. Five five. <laughs> The Freezing Trap, although I, w I had a rant about it, like a few minutes ago, might be impactful in this situation. Because your yeah, opponent will actually get a 5-5 five five and a double adapt um, beast. And the Freezing Trap will actually say, well, huh, I don't really care. Yep. Let's see who goes on Hyena. It's just going to come down now. It, this is really nice because if any minion is played and the Hyena isn't killed, that's two buffs to the Hyena already. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, that creates a 6 4 hyena. And there's not a lot powder can do about it. That's what will happen. Uh, I mean, the Pterodox has to be played, right? Unless you go for the Defender of Argus, but then the hyenas are even better for that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the hyenas are even better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to go for it and just rely on killing the hyena next turn. Alright. Um, Death Rattle is not bad to get back on the board after it gets killed, so you can maybe go for the Taunt as the second pick, if you get it, of course. Yeah. Uh, stealth doesn't really do much, uh, apart from the fact that it can be played around Kill Command. I mean, it can be used to play around Kill Command. Yep. And Divine Shield, I well, if you don't get a taunt, Divine Shield is worse than Death Rattle, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah, Death Rattle's nice, I think. Living Spoil seems reasonable to me. And there's Taunt, and second Death Rattle. Death Rattle again, playing to Unleash. Seems like Taunt has to be picked, right? Because you have a 5-5, five, five, so your opponent has to... Well, he sacrifices the two cats, goes with in with the weapon, 6 damage to the Did face. Alright, he's going for the double death rattle. But now... Uh-oh. Two kill commands. Small I fight. think this uh, changes a lot. The Unleash the Hounds now will be just... This is crazy. Quick death. Quick death the for powder. Just win? I think I think that's the case. That is five hounds! That is 10 damage if he trades everything, just from the Hounds, with the Cat that's actually plus 12. The bad thing is that he cannot play Freezing Trap, but the Hyena itself will be much bigger than the attack from the Dinosaur mm -hmm. on its own. This is crazy. 12 damage Whoosh. on turn 4. <laughs> Look at Jason Jarge is like, yeah, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Good old hyena. <laughs> Man, do you need to And there's just two kill commands. There's just like g almost guaranteed lethal over two turns here. If only he had had six mana. Yeah. It's just like... Yep. Poof, Juju. You're dead. But yeah, this, uh, these two kill commands uh, almost offer no way out for Powder. There's six damage. Uh, so you can just... Even with no beasts, there's five damage next turn with kill command hero power which puts him to seven, another five damage the turn after, so at minimum three turn clock. Jesus. He has to use the Doomguard to double trade. And the five five. Four for one. I'll take it. Well, almost like a four for one. Not exactly. Now kill command. It's just setting the lethal next turn, guaranteed because- Oh, look dog, at that. Because uh, the dog and the cat, best buddies for life live. <laughs> My God. Woof. Go, Hunter. Well, thank you, China, for trying to bring us up to the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they take the third game in a convincing fashion like that, we're back on the schedule. Yeah, I mean, that was absolutely incredible there, you know, for China. Already, they're just swapping. Jason's out, like, done, next. Let's go. Yep, and, uh, you know, moving on to Omega Zero there. And, uh, you know, absolutely crazy game, to be honest. It's it's difficult because the, pa the spore picks for Powder Mm -hmm. Makes sense in terms yeah. of I have minions on the board. I have Argus in hand, other minions as well to battle for the board. Yeah, if Hyena lives and then your opponent has Unleash, uh, probably who's going to be a problem. He would probably take in the Taunt um, Adapt if there wouldn't be a weapon on board. Oh, yeah, because he then sees anyway, there's a right? trade yeah. and then it just doesn't really do much, right? The Hyena goes straight to the dome anyway. Yeah. But without that, the Hyena maybe would have a stop just on that Taunt. 
Right. Yeah, and bear in mind that the uh, Hyena doesn't often live on the board. Powder didn't have a turn one. <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? So yeah. a lot of things didn't go Powder's way there. But we're going to be moving on. And uh, Orange is currently Sweden's last hope to stay in this match. Omega Zero on the Shaman. Hopefully we see another version of the list. And Orange, who is a Hunter player, no surprise that he's going to play Hunter or even have it in his lineup. Because just as much as we talk about Show and Warrior, Orange and Hunter go hand in hand too. He's yep. one of the guys who's been working a lot on Hunter lists. And um, I expect good things from this list. I actually looked at some of his. A uh, couple of cards that wasn't too sure of. Mm -hmm. But he has been playing Black Knight in there as well. Right. Uh, well to try we and have tried it personally yeah, as try, well. Trying to beat out the Warriors right? and stuff. So, you know, it's definitely cool. I'll be interested to see what uh, list Orange uses. But Omega Zero on this Shaman as well. Orange. I have to say Omega Zero is the most badass nickname in Harson scene. Uh, but I think it's from Final Fantasy. Someone had a nick. Some, yeah. some, was, there was something, something in Final Fantasy with Omega Zero. From something. But yeah, uh, Omega Zero is a very, very good player. And uh, that is uh, uh, Knight as well in the background. He was there. We didn't see him before. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually didn't see him. Yeah, so uh, he's, uh, he was there. It's just we only saw three of them on camera any given time. It's like a rule. You're not allowed four. Only ever three. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are going to see uh, Sweden versus China. China 2-0 up. They must be feeling great. If they just 3-0 Sweden, that will be fantastic for them because Definitely. they had, they had a, a, rough, a rough run in HCT. Most of these guys were <laughs> in yeah. the Bahamas playing, so they had a rough run there. And then just saying, actually, no, you know, we're putting China on the map again <laughs> and getting a good win against a very strong Hearthstone country. Let's go into it. Omega Zero versus Orange, Shaman versus Hunter, and I could probably guess most of this list from Orange. <laughs> Nesting Rocks. Look at that. Omega Zero is actually playing a face Shaman, I would say. It's very similar to uh, Subos, right? I think so. Yeah, it might be very similar. For Orange, though, Nesting Rocks, a double Ninja Hounds, Animal Companion, it's a mid-range version. Yeah, it is mid-range. You can say that. Orange isn't, uh, doesn't really, he has played Face Hunter, of course, because when Face Hunter is strong, you play it. Mm -hmm. But uh, in general, it much prefers mid range lists. This, uh, I'm not going to talk about what cards may be in this list, because one, I actually don't know and I don't want to presume. But I hope this is a certain list that I think it might be, because there's some cool cards in here. But we'll see. Omega Zero not got the one drop, but it's definitely got a lot of beef available in terms of just dropping that uh, crawler on two, because you're not going to need it against Hunter. That is true. Most uh, Hunters are not playing Pirates. Both this of them may as well have played Quest. Oh my god, Unbound Elemental. Yep. This is, uh, again, a list that uh, LVG actually posted that he was mm -hmm. playing in the China mm -hmm. Championships with. Oh, okay. Yeah, and these guys uh, respect him quite a lot, I would say. Uh, LVG is a very impressive player, and he was taking this list with the Unbound Elementals into the uh, China Invitationals, so it's looking good. It's uh, I think it's their effective playoffs. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, looking pretty good. The uh, bow coming down on the crawler, pretty straightforward there for Orange. Now, the uh, the infested wolf into nesting rock combo actually goes off more th uh, more wow. times than you'd imagine. He's still kind of um, low on curve because next thing he has to play a two drop and oh, that clears the unborn elemental. I mean, you might actually do it right. I think it's okay because you will know that if you if someone plays unborn elemental, that means he has a lot of overload in his deck. And also, Unbound Elemental gains uh, health as well as attack. Yes. And health can be a problem to actually kill as it goes out of range. So. It's actually a better trog. Yep. <laughs> but it's for three mana. So uh, when you think about it, it's only plus one, plus one than the trog. But um, each overload gives him the buff to the health. So that's pretty important. Um, and I feel like Orange should make the commitment and respect the Unbound Elemental. Because if that gets out of hand, he will have to sacrifice Kill Command for it. And this might, this might dismantle his um, just mana curve in the future. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna go for the kill command, and also having double Razor Maw is um, he's, he's gonna be potentially really powerful because you can double adapt on the same minion and get like plus attack and wind fury mm -hmm. going forward. So that could be kind of crazy. Orange has put himself in a position though that sets him up for the Infested Wolf into Rock Curve or Infested Wolf into the Razor Maw curve, of course. He really wants to. Did hold on to the Unleash, so when the ball goes a bit wider, he can't answer it pretty well. Uh, that is true. Seems like a good um, play for Infested Wolf. We, we talk about Infested Wolf a lot in the previous metagame. It was perceived as just too slow. Too slow to fit in a, in a deck. Uh, it just didn't do much. Any other photo was actually better 
than Unfestival. I mean, Hunter but was just too slow in the previous well, meta game, to be fair. But <laughs> that's also true. But now with the interaction between the amount of minions you have on board with nesting rock, uh, the fact that the, all those bees have now synergy with the uh, crack, crackling reservoir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's different. It's way different. Okay, so now we might ooh, unleash reservoir poisonous to kill the seven seven. Ooh, is awesome. So any, at any point you can just adapt the infested wall. No, it makes sense. Well, if you adapt a dog, it means plus one actually kills it off if you trade everything in. Mm -hmm. Poisonous insta kills it, which is yeah. sick. Plus attack kills it. There's plus attack. Uh, uh, okay, it well, plus attack helps. It's plus attack, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the power of Razormore. And now we can clear the board as well. Pretty damn good. <laughs> Pretty damn good. Yep. So that shows the power of Razor Mall and why we keep talking about how power, like how it's probably one of the best cards in the set. Just out of nowhere, you just clear a board, and now Mega Zero is overloaded quite significantly, and Lightning Storm's just gonna overload him even more. I don't think you go for the over, um, for the Lightning Storm. Milestone Portal is just oh, yeah. enough, and you build the board as well at the same time, yep. so it's way better. And open up the uh, Hammer of Twilight next turn, which is very important. Oh, Shilber. You shall not pass. Well, if you get a Flamethrower Totem next turn, that's actually pretty sick, because you can follow it up with Hammer of Twilight Ooh. and that. The old Alley Cat Rock combo. Oh, the old one. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I have I'm seen it so many times, man. Hey, I've been playing a lot of Hunter, okay. I have seen <laughs> it a lot of time. Yeah, this is so nice. I'd be surprised if there's any other the route round this this play because you could invest in Wolf and Crackling, raise them all, but raise them all is way more powerful when you play it on a minion that can actually attack that turn. Mm -hmm. So the the adapt is just not normally good enough. This four seven with Torn. And That's it's a big minion. Does it have two heads or is it just yes, two, two of heads. those? Right. Weird. It is weird. As most things are in Hearthstone. So how do you deal with that? You can go Lava Burst, Lightning Storm, Firefly. It's kind of sad. Though. No spell damage. Mm, I think he has to. Everywhere. Lava Burst going to get used up to kill the rock. And, uh, you know, it's quite the investment, but also the rock was just quite a big dude to deal with. There ain't many of them in the deck. Mm -hmm. But we can see that Howlmaster is available as well, and Razor Maul. So you could do that on the same minion to create quite a beefy uh, taunt guy. And they can the Grandmother. It's actually a good target for the Huntmaster as well. Yep. A 3-3 three, three that dies into a 3-2. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Hmm. So let's. Well, this is kind of hard to predict. What can you get? A, uh, what What is the outcome that you will get the most out of the adapts, yes. right? And does it? Is it beneficial to just adapt maybe first, see what you get, yeah. and then think about Handmaster? Because if you get Poisoner as an example, you Handmaster the other one. Yeah, yeah, because the attack doesn't make a difference. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do like adapt first. Also, you know, you can work on things where plus one plus one means that mm. the Handmaster just trade the Handmaster minion just trades straight into the uh, the shield bear. Sure. Yeah. Um, but then again, that doesn't change much for the Taunt Totem either. So. We'll see. You might just not even play the Crackling Reservoir and just go for the grand, uh, Grandmother and yeah. Infested Wolf, kill the Town Totem, go a little bit slower, because you know that you're at 24 HP, so it doesn't really you know, bug you that much. Just got to turn up the wolf, yeah. Alright, so the initial play I had in mind was picked, but I, I feel like it might not be the best one. Because Infested Wolf is really slow, still. Like, you're kind of behind with this. Mm. My worry is if this board gets cleared up, this Razor Maul just never gets value. Whereas you could have got Razor Maul onto the uh, yeah, onto yeah, yeah. the one ones, right? That, that's what I'm thinking. Like, although to be fair, your opponent used already two milestone portals, right? For sure. You're like two or one? Oh no, one maelstrom, right? One maelstrom, no lightning storm. Mm -hmm. And what are the odds of this, this deck playing uh, to, to play lightning storm? I wouldn't assume that they have lightning storm. Depends if they've looked at the uh, the lists that have been posted. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Lightning Storm roll high actually gives additional damage to the face. And it's low. I guess I'll just tank it. Still not Always terrible. Oh, well, I'd tank it. Yeah, I'd, I would tank it as well. Okay, so that doesn't want to take the 4 damage just in case. Frontier Power, of course. 
doing two every single time. Maybe he use it. So. Maybe he has in mind the fact that Twilight Hammer might be used for trading with minions instead. So you don't want to do it too often. Sure. Well, now the second hand master actually is very impactful. Made the play way better <laughs> for the previous turn. Patch is drawn. Whoops. Not really what we wanted to see at this point. Yeah, we might see a Twilight Hammer over right here. Yep. This is tough. Because uh, Omega Zero now using some AoE means that you can't really deal with a board again. You know, Hunter's not supposed to keep rebuilding the board. It's not how it should work. And normally Definitely they get the board cleared once and then they're in trouble. And an animal companion with a Kraken Reservoir. Hoffa, Wind Fury. Oh, oh there's one! My God. So Orange, what? if you do not crack, uh, raise them all the Hoffa, I'm going to be... We're not friends anymore, basically. Well, he, there's merit to actually adapt the 1-1. One, one. Plus 3 attack is good. Poisonous is good. Plus 3 but HP Wind is bad. Wind Fury, Hoffa, Lothar. Wind Fury, Hoffa <laughs> is better. That is true. It's just funny. You can also just build a, a charging yeti on your own, right? So that's true. Shouldn't yeti be a beast? No, I think yeti is actually kind of like humanoid. Ah, believe it or not, makes sense. Yeah, well, what I'm, I'm gonna go into about. the uh, the low with the low term. <laughs> no, he's not doing it. Orange. No, he can oh, still do it afterwards. Now. Like it doesn't really change anything. True. Ah, that's true actually. Yeah. Okay, he's doing it. We, we are friends. Wind There's Fury. The Wind Fury. Wind Fury. Health. No, Wind Fury. Huffer, come on. Okay, at least he tried. Four, five, Huffer. Now the game has been balanced. <laughs> Seems fantastic. Volcano top deck. <laughs> I doubt he's gonna play it. Oh, wrong order of those cards, man. You can see now the impact of how how patches just denies you any value if well, the, you draw it. Well, the problem as well is it's not so much that patches is bad to play as a 1-1 one, one for one mana charge, which mm -hmm. is not good, mm -hmm. but it's the fact that that card should be something else, should be another card in the deck. Like, what if that card's Lava Burst? You know, it's like you can suddenly start to add up a lot of damage that could be available here. But the patches is, in fact, just a 1-1. One, one. I mean, taking up a card slot for Omega Zero here. Yep, and it, it might actually mean game. I mean, probably will. But if you would have had a different card than that, it's a different story. But I think we'll not see a 3-0 over Sweden this time. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, Agro Shaman does have a way to do silly amounts of damage. To be fair, this Hunter seems to be better at dealing damage right now. That's what happens when you buff Huffer. Becomes buffer. Do you want to kill the one one? It just doesn't want to take any potential damage, right? If the one one gets a buff from Leok, then it hits this five damage to face. Right, that's true. Hi, you know? Okay. I'm guessing like Omega Zero is not playing any um, hexes. So I would imagine so. As in yeah, the so he thing. needs to get a lava burst to deal with that huffer. Eight lightning's close, but no cigar unless he can roll the um, spell damage. Doesn't get it. Well, it's still not terrible. You just kill the hyena and go with four damage to the face. And the three, three. And you rough. get a three, three. Like I said, you know, the shaman does have a way Damn. to stay in this game, as their, their spells are normally way more impactful. Like Alley cat, there you go. Terrible hunter draw. This is. <laughs> no, 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 that's what I mean. Like, you said it with such a certainty, you know. It's like, oh, I knew. I knew no, this will get drawn. That's the problem late game for Hunter when they get starved, right? Your, mm -hmm. your draws can potentially be very, very ter terrible. Look at the difference between Alley Cat and a high main. Like, it's absolutely crazy. And now there's what? Eight, 11 damage. 1 1 this turn. Hmm. Do you have to go all face it? Or do, do you do you kill the two one ones? No, you can't. Four five seven eight. You can kill one with the three three. Yeah, and that's it though. You need to go face with the four two to have a bigger chance at lethal. Nine damage. I mean sorry, he nine HP and then next turn you bring him to five. He played two Hunterbusters. So unless it's animal companion Misha, there's chance to have just lethal with um, Lava Burst. Lightning Bolt, one is left in the deck. 
can also, also roll lethal. Also as well, if orange trades, then you effectively almost buy a turn again, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah I like, I, I like yeah, the one. Is, the, I think this, if you trade double into the one ones, one, you're not saving that much damage for the payoff, but also you're actually not getting close enough to lethal mm -hmm. uh, because now, as you said, lava burst is lethal just with the weapon. This is all going to rely on orange's draw. He needs kill command. Oh, oh Nesting Rock is gonna now change things again because that is a gigantic tall minion. Well he we he didn't talk about that. The cat. Yeah, we didn't talk oh. about that, and that might be game. Yeah, that might have sealed it now. Wow. So far, seven. Oh no, Lava Burst can still do it. If he doesn't trade. But does he? Well He can trade the one one in. Mm -hmm. Because the 1-1 one -one I don't think changes the maths at all. No, it doesn't. So yeah. he can trade the 1-1 one -one in, in case of Flame Tongue value. Like but you. I think he has to go face with Hofa, because it's the same issue. If you don't go face, then you turn away again, and I turn away again. Because you know the rock dies if you don't trade. The rock dies to the two minions on board. Mm -hmm. And then Lava Burst is an opening, right? That is true. But if you trade, then you also <laughs> still need like a kill command when one's already been used. Man, this is so, rough. it's very, very difficult. He trades with the free free. I suppose this also means that... Oh, no, 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 I take it all back. This trade's fine because if the weapon trade happens, then that's four damage to face. Mm -hmm. Then Huff is lethal. Flame to <sighs> Well, uh, that keeps him alive. Yeah, he can trade the, uh, the healing totem into Huffer, clear the board, and then he's only on four health, but not a lot of stuff does four damage from the Hunter. Right? Mm hmm And he gains the 4-2 elemental back again. Yeah, and he just set up Sleeful for next turn. Huh. Well, this is this definitely a good draw. Yeah, and it still was a very good call from Orange to trade. Yep. Yeah, this is very, very, very close. Both players just playing off the top of the deck and trying to edge out any advantage they can gain here. Um, he has to... He has to trade fully because kill command. Yes. Definitely. Otherwise, he's just dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he needs to trade. Because this removes, I think, all draw outs. And before that. Oh, no, Huffer. Huffer again from Animal Come. That's it, right? Yeah. But I feel it's needed. Oh, yeah, you do trade. Yeah, yeah, you trade. Because it, it removes everything but Huffer as a lethal out mm -hmm. for Orange, whereas Omega Zero is looking pretty reasonable with six damage now available. So, unfortunately for Omega Zero, there was no way of uh, setting up the, the placement in a good way to have guaranteed lethal next turn. <laughs> Rat Pack's still actually sick. So Omega Zero needs to end the game, and what's very important is that totally totem spell damage. Lightning Bolt wins the game. Mm -hmm. Well, it would have, like... Oh, sorry, sorry, Lightning Bolt wins the game anyway, I'm not talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry. I apologize. Oh, oh no, Animal Elemental is not enough, and that's game. So wow. close to actually sweep. Whew. Sweden. I, that got tense. Look at that! Even he even rolled the tone totem. You wouldn't want to do it to yourself, would you? I would have just conceded. I don't even want to see the totem. Man, that was so close. Orange must be pretty sure he's won. Uh, the Chinese players are very respectful. They would not sit and try and like BM, you know, like oh landing bolt lol at yeah. the end. So uh, Orange is probably feeling pretty confident. You can see it in his face, just kind of. Surely not. There we go, Orange. Orange just hit the win for Sweden there and keeps them in the game. Very similar story to the, the Poland matchup as well, where Blackfire just about held on. Uh, and now the game is going to pass on to an ex world champion, uh, Oskaka, to try and keep the. the they guys need to in. bring the beast from the cage. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to just open up Oskaka's look. It's only a little cage, though, he's not tall. Just a <laughs> tiny little cage. And be like, release the beast. Yeah. And Oskaka just gets there. He's like, okay, I'll just play some milestone. He was just eating. You know, cheesecake yeah. there. I was like, I need to play? Oh. Okay. So you didn't, you guys didn't win, Frio. Yeah, oh. Good job, guys. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so uh, it's going to be um, China 2 1 still up versus Sweden. So, like I said, very close to a sweep. But now Oskak is going to be coming up against Knight, I, I believe. So, Knight walk. Yeah, yeah, so that's going to be awesome. I love his hair as well. From what I saw of him, he's got cool hair. You'll appreciate that. Yeah, it's similar. All right, I'm going to look uh, closer on it then. We can check out what classes they're going to play. Oskaka on the Rogue again. Oskaka actually quite well known for his uh, Rogue play. And Nightwalk going on the Mage. Very interesting. Mage versus Rogue. So we already have seen one time today. Um, it was the Quest Rogue against a typical Freeze Mage. Yep. 
It wasn't the quest mage, so it was just Alexstrasza, Fireballs, Frostbolts, and multiple freeze turns. Uh, while we have also seen, if, I if my memory doesn't um, serve me bad, uh, it was the quest mage against Miracle Rogue. Yeah, I think it was Miracle Rogue, yeah. Right? And that was a m like four icebox? No, wait, that was Zoo. Never mind. Yeah, that was Zoo, the four icebox. Yeah. Zoo. A lot of matches today. We We've actually had insane a lot, insane amount of games. So sorry for that. We'll see what does Nightwork bring to the table. Fantastic hair, that's one. Yeah, it's Colors a, on it's point. A, it's a cool color, definitely. And then uh, we have Oskaka there. It's the usual uh, webcam position, feeling good, and they're uh, ready to go. So these guys are going to get into the game very, very shortly. And as you said, Oskaka has to win to keep Sweden in this match. And if he does win. He plays again straight after because he's the ace player, whereas Omega Zero steps in to become the ace player for China if uh, Oskaka actually takes the win and brings it to the next game. But if Oskaka wins, he needs to pick a different class from what he played right now. Yeah, so he has Priest or the ninth class available for him to pick if it goes to the ace game, of course. Yeah, but first, first, <laughs> first things first. He needs to win this game against Nightwalk. Nightwalk is gonna, well, Hopefully for China, bring it 3-1, and there will be another 3-1 today uh, when it comes to the scores, and, well, take the lead in the group. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see which version of Rogue Oskakas brought, and we can see it is opening the way gate for the Mage and for Nightwalk and Team China, whereas Oskaka is rocking the cabins below. Double quest decks coming out from these guys, and, uh, yeah, we kind of... We kind of saw roughly how this matchup plays out in general, but we can see it again, and, you know, piloted by some uh, very, very exceptional players. See how this one turns out. Very uh, difficult one to call. Uh, is is Doomsayer on two even worth it? No, I, I think, I think it's more like, like uh, Yeah, I think you have to wait for like Frost Nova Doomsayer, right? Yeah. Or you know, some kind of freeze Doomsayer. After after the rogue pops up the quest, I think that's the moment when you play Doomsayer with um with Frost Nova. Although there's a huge chance that it will die anyway. Because your opponent suddenly has multiple minions with charge that have five attack and the yep. Doomsayer doesn't really look that impressive anymore. I'm also waiting for Quest Rogue to just start playing Sap, because no one expects it. Mm -hmm. Well, they, s they, ha they sometimes they have vanish, right? Mm. Hmm. Okay, Oskaka keeping the shadow step, and Oskaka is rocking a Wisp version of this deck. And uh, yeah, that's definitely interesting, just having a zero mana effect, uh, well, a zero mana minion to just bounce and proc whenever you want. It means that the uh, the Ferryman and the Brewmaster, if they're in the deck, don't really care. The fact it's almost like a shadow step, because yeah, they're reduced yeah. to zero anyway. Mm -hmm. So you can just play them whenever you want. You can also just Wisp, Shadow Step, Wisp, Edwin. Yep. That's a good point. It also means that you're not as punished on turn five when you play it uh, because you can just play Wisp, Wisp on turn five with Caverns below and uh, actually just get two five five straight off the bat. So many options. Well, what are the options for Skaka here? Just the dagger, right? Yep. But, you know, the reason these like seemingly simple turns appear to take a while is they'll be discussing future turns with mm -hmm, the team. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, okay, so we're going to tag it this turn, then we might go into backstab Van Cleef the turn after, and then we'll do this, do that, do this, do that. So, you know, you use your time where you've got it on the simple turn to discuss what's potentially more complicated turns in the future. Oh, interesting, a Volcanic Potion. We don't see that often, a Volcanic Potion in the Quest Mage. Since you already play, like, Blizzard, Blizzard, no Flame Strikes. Well, they might not. That's the thing, right? You know, Maybe they might be swapping Blizzard, one yes. for Volcanic. It, like, <clears throat> Blizzard stalls, of course, the bigger minions. But if you're expecting more aggressive decks, then Volk Potion might just kill the minions straight up. Well, um, okay with it. the bad matchup is like Pirate Warrior, right? Pirate Warrior, any aggressive, like, Face Hunter, an example, might be also problematic. Uh, so it might have some merit. You're right. Let's see how it works out. Currently, both players on zero, though, in terms of the, uh, how far ahead they are in the quest. Oskaka just thinking about what exactly he wants to do. Does have that shadow step? I might decide that bouncing a novice engineer is worth it more than trying to bounce the wisps. Because <laughs> the novice engineer yeah. draws you cards. So, you know, it could well be more worthwhile. But see so what he goes for here as the rope starts burning. Oh, no, he's going oh. for the Van Cleef. Okay. Look at the faces of the Chinese players. <laughs> Brilliant, that's lovely Chuck in the background, like, what? <laughs> All right, how do you deal with that? I guess that's one of the options. 
for 10-5 with the, with the Doomsayer. Okay, so it's 6 damage to the face this turn, at least, because you can play Swashburger into um, patches and 7. Next turn, what will happen for Nightwalk is most likely just Frostbolt on the Edwin to just stop the bleeding, yeah. not to get more damage. I wonder if the secret's high in this deck as well. Well, he has Ice Block, and I'm not sure about Ice Barrier. When I, when I think about it, it's like you don't want to ever get Ice Barrier out of Arcanologist. It just feels bad. Yeah. Especially when you play a version with um, the um, Medivh's Valet. Yeah. Whereas, um, oh. speaking of which, uh, whereas Mana Bind actually gets you a spell towards your quest as True. well, so that can help out. And usually the pl the spells that the opponent is playing are great against his own deck. Yeah, and they're zero mana, so they're just good in general. Yep. So we're going to see uh, the Van Cleef has obviously just punched the face, and Medivh's Valet is just going to get dropped down as a 2-3 dude. And the monkey in the background, it's pretty funny. Yeah, there's the Frostbolt. And the Doomsayer. Four damage on board, so a simple backstab just deals with it. Yep. Ooh. One turn away, of course. Vanish could be pretty great, actually. Just heal up the um, Van Cleef, effectively. <laughs> well, you can also just uh, bounce back the Wisp. Yeah. That's true. Mimic pod as well. Mimic pod into Wisps. Let's go. There's the backstab easily dealt with. Oh, he needs the dagger. Right? Yeah, yeah, but it's easily dealt with, with mm. the Doomsayer. So now the Van Cleef is still a problem. It's a deck. Volk Potion, Ping, get him. But Medivh's Valet is alive. I'll reduce, what, 9 damage for, for leaving 2 on the board? <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's true. Yeah, Arcane Giants as well, looking around for Nightwalk. So you can see it's more than likely not the Exodia version with the unlimited fireballs. It's in fact the Arcane Giant version. South Sea Deckhand getting Mimic Pod. <laughs> that is just 3 Deckhands. That's he can play two this turn. Can't bounce them, of course, but he could play two. Deal uh, some pressure. And yeah, attack, that's about it, and right? then play Deckhand Vanish next turn, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then go again. Yeah, that sounds good. Although I'm I'm pretty surprised that the quest is still not popped. It's turn six. <laughs> Usually, when oh. I see on ladders... Some rare moments, Lothar. It yeah. doesn't get procced on four. <laughs> or, or three, even. That's that's my experience at least when I play against this deck. You also draw patches a lot, so you yeah. can't can't use your experience as uh, gospel. Boop. All right, that means Nightwalk knows what was the outcome out of the mimic pod. And the thing here is, if he, you know Nightwalk spends uh, two mana pinging, then that's two mana. He's not really doing anything else onto the board. That is an ice block, so he has got it available. Uh, still a few turns away, but two ice blocks might be enough to buy the time here. He's one out of six in the in the quest so far. Hit, hit, vanish. Oh, hit, hit, that can vanish, right? Um, yeah. You don't want to trade with those minions. No, if you vanish, well, you can... maybe with the valet. Uh, sorry, uh, with the Arcanologist. Because you don't want to give your opponent an option to get that second ice block. Like he doesn't know. They're already all, both on the hand. True, true. So I think there's some merit to just killing the Archonologist. Hmm. Interesting. He for sure attacks with one, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's whether he wants to kill the archaeologist. Uh, won't be too bad, though. He takes two damage with the dagger trade, of course. Oh, it's just gonna go face. <laughs> just may as well play the wisp. <laughs> Zero mana wisp, vanish, get him. Alright. This is a problem, I believe, for Nightwalk here. Well, he needs to play Ice Block this turn, 100%. And he's still super far away from the quest. One out of six. Yep. 
But there's a chance if he casts enough, even just a couple more spells, he could maybe get an Arcane Giant out and then Alex Shrazo him. Mm -hmm. And then just get aggressive, you know, not do the time warp, but just actually kill him because he has Arcane Giants on the board. It's something to consider, at least. Yeah, that's possible. Oskaka doesn't have a prep either, so he only has three mana spare, which he can create three five fives, of course, two of them charge. But, uh. That will put the Brock as well. Oh, there's another Vanish. No, it's two Vanishes in the deck. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that's super common. Now the quest is being drawn. Cool. Still no prep, so it has to be placed for five mana. Uh, well, that's that allows you to pop the block. But you can... Uh, wait, you can actually pop it at one, right? Because you can use the Eviscerate this turn. Uh, unless he wants to go for this, though. He wants to get the minions on the board, I guess. Mm, yeah. Uh, just remind you as well that uh, although the cameras uh, show three players for China and one for Sweden, Oskaka is on comms with the rest of his team, Powder, Show, and uh, an Orange, of course. So that's why you see Oskaka randomly talking. Uh, there is a team effort. It's just uh, they uh, too far apart to join up in person, but will join up in voice comms, so it is okay. Whereas China, those guys pretty much play uh, close together most weeks, actually. Mm -hmm. So I think they live pretty close. See the Frost Nova come down now and reduce the chance of these attacks going in, but there is an Eviscerate. This time. Well, there's also Vanish. You just Vanish and you have um, oh, yeah, you just charge minions. Again, yeah. Ugh. So filthy. Vanish seems good against Freeze Mages. Yes, I would agree. And that was never the case. I mean, vanish seeming good, I don't think was ever the case. Wait, that well in Milrog. Don't deck. talk to me about Milrog. Milrog. <laughs> uh, that, was, that wasn't a deck. That was my favorite archetype. I'm so sad. You work it's out what kind of person Lothar is when you hear him talk about Milrog. <laughs> I loved this deck, man. I'm super sad there's no Milrog or any Mill deck in, uh, in the standard. So many options. All right, so I think it's viable to, to do either of both. I mean, vanish, charge, or just eviscerate face this. Hmm. That's definitely an option. You want the, the free cards, right? Even if you evade, you can still play um, the Glacial Shard and the Wisp. And True. then have the charges True. for next turn, which is 10, which actually beats Ice Barrier as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it seems like Oskaka is taking it by the horns and is ahead in this situation. I don't already two ice blocks popped and this is not the game where we we will see like four. I uh, simply not know. This is a real problem though, because Nightwalk will know that there's two deck hands available in hand, so that's ten damage just straight away. And there's no real way to stop that happening. Yeah, ice Barrier isn't available. I think this might have to just be like a godlike babbling book of some kind. What is God like in this scenario? Another ice box? Ice block? Yeah, just chain ice box. Well, it's a vaporize. So, as close as it gets, it's a secret. Yep. But it's not the secret he really wanted. A glyph was necessary, basically. Out of this babbling book. Yep. To also count towards the quest, get additional, additional two, two spells. That's like. Not doable, I think. Yeah, we can see, you know, so many cards like the Loot Hoarders and the uh, the Shimmerings as well that actually would have helped towards the quest but never got to even die <laughs> or attack mm -hmm. on the board. Mm -hmm. So, he was proving a huge problem. The Vaporize does a... It's on there. Now Skaka with knowing he has plenty of damage is going to check. And the Wisp. No! The tragedy. Yeah, but they killed the Wisp. That was a cool Wisp. It's done. Yeah. 2-2. Two, two. Sweden yes. is bringing it back. Yeah, it's now going to be 2-2. Two, two. Oskaka does even it up. And Oskaka is going to play again. We will see him very shortly as he is the ace player. We're going up against Omega Zero. Oskaka cannot play his rogue. Uh, he's not allowed. He's already played it once. So he's going to be changing deck to either the ace deck they chose or, one of, or his spare deck, which I actually can't remember what class it was now. I can't remember either. 
It wasn't Rogue. There we go. I will tell you that for nothing. Well, it's also not Warrior. It's not Hunter. Druid. It's not Hunter. It's not Mage. Is it Warlock, maybe? Oh, no. No, no, it's Warlock played was played. Too, yeah. No. It was a class. Maybe Priest. Um... <laughs> Might well, be actually priest. It might be priest. So, uh, yep, uh, we are going to be prepping for the ace match. It's 2 2 versus China versus. I know it's China versus Alliance then. <laughs> China <laughs> versus Sweden, which is showing Alliance. Uh, yeah, so it's 2 2, and we're going to be playing the ace match. It's coming up very shortly. Oskaka versus Omega Zero. Omega Zero also cannot play his deck again. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to check that out now. Omega Zero's gone for Warrior. And Oskaka, it was priest. Oskaka's gone for the shame in the ninth class. So, really didn't want to play priest. We've not seen too many players bring priests so far today, and the players that have didn't really get very good performances. Well, we only have seen so one priest, right? right? From Philippines, it was the weird dragon priest with crystalline. Priest. priest. <laughs> it, it had crystalline oracles and priest of the feast. And so that's spied. a bit weird. <laughs> and never spite historians, would ne which didn't see any value because the dragons were just not there. So, um, interesting to see now what will be the warrior and the shaman from Muskaka. Basically, we have seen only two archetypes of warrior on only. It's actually amazing to see two archetypes of warrior. Yeah. Um, and it was just pirate warrior and taunt warrior. I feel like mo most of the players, the majority of the players, are leaning towards taunt warrior mm -hmm. a little bit more. So I'm guessing China will uh, actually bring it. Uh, but shaman is such a weird in, in such a weird spot. Actually, every single archetype I feel like is strong enough to be viable to play. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Actually, I think, uh, and even differences between those, we see the elemental decks very quite wildly in terms mm -hmm. of makeup. We've seen, so you know, the guys from Czech bring uh, you know volcanoes as well, you know, to try and clear out the board and just have the stronger turns late game. Yeah, we've seen very steady just elemental decks with almost all of the elemental cards. We saw, uh, you know, Taiwan bring uh, it was uh, Ping Ping Ho. Uh, bring in his one with the uh, oh my god, what are they called? The ones that summon the foul spirits. Um, elemental. It's not elemental. It's not sentinel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so we play, you know playing those pretty much just all the elemental cards to just try and ride out the wave mm -hmm. of strength from those cards. So it'll be cool to see what Oskaka's brought. It might even be you know, some aggro shaman actually, and not not elemental at all. So we will say never mind. It's elemental. We can see an omega zero with the pirate warrior. Okay, well, one way or the other, this one's going to be over pretty quick. Yeah. It's either the elemental shaman will just tone up and stop the leading really fast, uh, or the Omega Zero Pirates Warrior will just stomp the shaman instantly. Skakago got a pretty okay start. Firefly Glacial Shard is a very good card versus Pirate Warrior. You can either lock out a weapon swing or lock out just a minion attack as well. Definitely correct. It seems like an actually an awesome draw. Oh my Patches. god. Patches again. Incredible. Yeah, it curves out next turn quite easily with the Firefly into the Flame Elemental and Glacial Shard next turn. And the Zoth's first mate. Uh, not too great versus a 1 2 when there's no patches. This is pretty horrible, to be honest. Is it just coin patch? No, you can't, you can't coin it out. If so, for some reason the pirate lives for the next turn. You can have value out of cultist, Ooh. but we all know it, it's not going to happen. So it's kind of sad. Hmm? Warrior distance, uh, sorry, warrior, uh, jade claws distance. You uh, don't have overload for ten four, so you can just play fire plume into seven of cunning so it Seems yeah, to like be this. very strong. Also, as well, what are you trying to glaze the shard this turn? It doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. You're just going to waste the time otherwise. So I really like going into the one drops next turn. Uh, if needed, and then, as you said, go into four, into five, and try and snowball from there, because Omega Zero really has not got off to an even remotely fast start here. The thing is, like, in this s scenario, the Glacier Shot cannot even be played next turn, just to keep it for, like, the final swings of the weapon. That's true, yeah. You, you can, can just hero, hero power pass. Hero power pa I mean, attack for one, but uh, you can just hero power, and it's fine. Next turn, go fire plume, probably trade with the weapon. Uh, with something that had more than 2 HP. Also as well, now the option that the Hot Spring can be played instead of the Phoenix, because, you know, it's going to float one mana to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but, like, it's just a good taunt, and if you take any damage, it's kind of insane. Yeah, but you want to also get value from the heal, right? In this case, it will just heal True. for one. Uh, well, if you get attacked next turn, right? If there's, like, Cockrum. 
Uh, not cock run. Mm -hmm. uh, like a weapon buff attack or something. Yeah, that's true. Oh, he's going to go Glacial Shard, maybe. Well, when you think about it, it still stops one damage or a trade with your minion while you put out a minion that can trade with any of the pirates that will be played. Yeah. But he knows there's a patch, so... He needs to charge now. You're able to combo it with the Cultist alongside the coin to make this hook a slightly less rusty at a 2-2 weapon now. It got polished. Look at this. Oh, and there's a volcano as well. Interesting. This Phoenix skills. And the elemental train begins. Well, it doesn't really look great for Omega. Still, like, just about making it work. This uh, Nagakos is still going to require an answer. I do you believe that it's just going to be Servant of Kalamos, though? Yeah. They don't get enough value from Volcano with only the one minion. You want to get Stone Sentinel or Elf Elemental oh. or Hot Spring Guardian. Those are actually, both are actually amazing. The problem with Elf Elemental is that you overload for free. Hot Spring Guardian can be played like a double on turn 6 as well. And it gives you very similar values when it comes to um, the health oh, yeah. that you just soak or heal. Yeah. But at the same time, Elf Elemental just trades with every it kills single everything, right? Minion. Whereas two attack right. can leave pirates alive, uh, leave Froth and Berserkers alive, which is a huge Corcoran problem. Elite actually. is a problem as well because it just kills mm. the Hot Spring Guardian up, yeah. and it stays on the board. So it requires another source of damage. I'm just okay with Earth Elemental here if I'm Muskaka on Team uh, Sweden. Mainly because you have Volcano as like a backup in two turns time. Mm -hmm. And you can still, uh, if you Earth Elemental next turn, you overload it for three, which means that you've still got plenty of mana to play Hot Spring Guardian the turn after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then go Volcano if you need to. But to be honest, Earth, and Element, uh, Earth Elemental into Hot Spring Guardian, maybe even healing the Elemental could actually just end out the game. That's true. You can just heal up, get that dude on his feet, although he doesn't have any feet. <laughs> so, um, I actually... Sorry. Sorry, sorry I was just going to say, I think a Corsair into Cultist is going to be the best thing here. You get a four attack weapon with a second charge, more importantly, and then have to probably just trade the Corsair into the servant. You mean Cultist into Corsair, then... Toned up. I mean, uh, armor up. Oh, sorry. Cult is in the cost. Yeah, sorry. The Naga is a pirate. What am I talking about? It's still not a lot of damage. You push for 9. Your opponent is at 17. Still far away from killing your opponent. Yep. Oh, definitely not a good position to be in. Small strike might help out with any minions that come down soon as well. But there has to be. Like I can't imagine any other play. Like, the, it's called the Cultist... Base. <laughs> Get him. The cultist needs to have um, some value as AP. Wait, what? All right. That is very Flame good. Time. Okay. So. Well, the thing is, blaze color. how do you plan to win against an elemental shaman when you're starting tr start to trade? Yeah, this is insane. We have blaze color coming up for us, Kaka, next turn to remove any minion that's going to be played here. Or, depending on how wide the board is, Earth Elemental could just be the way to go. Double. I didn't really understand the trade last turn. It's just damage loss. Double trade in. Yeah. Look at that. That simple Fire Elemental soaked 7 damage. See Volcano Hero Power this turn. I mean, it just clears, right? You only overload yep. for 2, which means you can Earth Elemental the turn after. I like it. Definitely like it. Do you want damage? Kill the friendly berserkers. Like if you just play Blaze Caller, he still has a six four minion. Um and you are not threatening lethal anyway. I wonder. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a volcano. Look at this sick animation. <laughs> what? That's so slow? It's because it's the frothing berserker. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, the frothing berserkers are double buffing, remember? Correct. Oh, this is ridiculous. Everyone just go and grab a cup of tea while you're uh, ready to, uh, to finish this animation. I'm joking, of course, we are ready to go already. But we didn't go anywhere, it was only just. The Earth Elemental coming down next turn is going to be huge, though, and potentially backbreaking from Mega Zero here. And 
it looks like Sweden might be on the road to doing a reverse kill. The first reverse sweep we've seen. Oh, it games. was really close because of the game between uh, Orange and uh, Nighthawk. Orange and Nighthawk, right? I know, Skaka played Nighthawk, didn't he? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. so that was Orange Mega and... Zero. Oh, Mega, yeah. Uh, it was really super close. It was on the ropes. Both players were actually like one of lethal for one turn, and uh, a simple draw with damage would actually go with the match either way. Only five mana available, and now Tar Creeper into Hot Spring, into Taunt, 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 Taunt. And uh, the Pyro Warrior is going to very, very much struggle here for Team China to be able to get this win and take a win in this series. It's impossible to win now, to be honest. Like, this thing is impossible, Luther. There's no way Omega Zero will win this match after that Elf, Elf Elemental will get played. Even an Arcana Reaper right now, with the trade, doesn't really do much. Oh, he's got double trade with Corcoran into Mole Strike to push this for three. I mean, it's as good as it's going to get to a certain extent, right? But with the Hot Guardian and the Tar Creeper already in hand. Yep. There you go, double three drops. And Stone Sentinel is available for Oskaka as well. Elementals are being played every single turn. Omega Zero is playing off the top of the deck as Pirate Warrior. And when your opponent's on 18, and you're playing off the top of your deck, definitely not the situation you want to be in. And that looks like it could just be game. The guys are laughing and having a good time, you can see there. And I have no doubt Team Sweden on voice comms with us Kaka are having a great time too, as they must be feeling very, very confident. Stone Sentinel is open for next turn. That's something I used to say quite like often you. is if, if your opponent plays Feral Spirit and you're the Pirate Warrior, you probably lose. Right? <laughs> if your opponent plays Feral Spirit at this point, plus a 4-4, you probably lose. <laughs> yeah. You're running out of health at that point. Yeah. Because it's pretty late in the game. And if you didn't kill anyone, yeah, you they mostly will kill you. Yeah, feels good. Okay, so uh, it's going to be armor up. And Deckhand can't even charge this turn. So it's definitely a huge problem here. No weapon available for Omega Zero. I feel like that's what he suffered from quite a lot. He did boost the hook a little bit. But other than that, he's not really done anything in terms of weapons. And Pyro gets hindered so heavily when you can't actually have the weapon activated as live. Well, to be fair, Omega Zero is trading with almost every single occasion. Yep. So it definitely felt weird. Pick your poison here, Luther. Which seven drop would you like to play this? I Which one like will most, most. Sentinel will just trigger a 3 yeah. 2 1 concede. Push so him out of the game. I would definitely play that. Now the uh, one attack for the Tar Creeper not being too bad. In the one damage needed to clear off the captain. Heroic strike. Eh, probably not going to be enough to finish probably this game not. from 18 health for Oskaka and his elemental shaman and the great wall of taunts going on. Uh, they have stolen the wall from China and now Oskaka has it in Sweden. I would say that Omega Zero needs to suddenly get his uh, brawl out of somewhere <laughs> to even stand a little chance. But no, it's not enough and surprisingly, Sweden takes it after being 0-2. Yeah, saved the best till last. Oskaka got it covered. He uh, won the game four to keep Sweden in the running and then also won the uh, won the ace match as well. So good job to Oskaka and good job to Team Sweden. Uh, taking Team China down a peg and offering them the, the defeat out in the first match of their group. Got to be feeling fantastic to beat China when, you know, that's one of, again, we've talked about as we move through groups, the sort of giants in the group, right? Yeah. And we're seemingly starting off this week with multiple big big matches and actually beating out China is, is huge. They're one of the huge threats. They're, they're definitely star players, so I'm looking forward to the next matches that will China bring to the table. But at the same time, have to give it to Sweden, man. The, the morale after losing first two matches had to be like low yeah really had to be low oskaka showed it was domination as well that was the well, problem the early game nerves of steel i would say yeah. right he was in a really bad position everything was on his shoulder twice in a row if he wins the first match he still needs to win the second one it doesn't really matter if you even win the first one if you lose the second one so a lot of pressure on him and he actually did it he brought back the team to sweden everyone rejoice sweden didn't lose the match 
Yeah, and we can check out as well what's kind of funny. There's uh, Omega Zero losing both of his games and Oskaka winning both. So the ace yeah. players, you know, being on very different sides of the coin there, uh, the way it worked out. So congratulations to Team Sweden. They take the win. I think uh, we can check out the standing soon and how that group still looks. Just to remind you of the group these uh, players have come from uh, in terms of China and Sweden. We can check it out. Sweden obviously at the top now with the only team taking a victory so far as the only match being played was the one you just saw and China at the bottom. But most importantly, the game record is 2-3 for China. So they do have some kind of uh, benefit as opposed to being 3 0 for example, would be a huge problem is when it gets to tiebreakers. Yeah. Those numbers are very, very important indeed. That is true. Well, it's not really much to talk about about the groups so far. We need we need more matches and we are left with the last match for the day. Right? Yeah, we've got, um, you know, the, the last match, we've got five matches per day. Uh, for today and tomorrow, and then the day after, there's going to be, I believe, two matches that's going to be cast by our good friends over in America. It's going to be uh, Rob, Wing, and Cora, as far as I'm aware, though, for now. But we do have the next match coming up very, very shortly. It's going to be the final match of day one of Hearthstone, Hearthstone Global Games, so don't go anywhere.